Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Midnight Eastern Daylight Time, and uh, in about uh, 25 minutes from tonight, right now, we'll be getting to our citizens panel. If in fact there is one, uh, it depends on whether you call or not. Okay, and that's a very, a very simple thing. Meanwhile, uh, we have a guest tonight. Out to Lake Oswego we go. Maybe that rhymes or something. I don't know. To, uh, to Lake Oswego where, in Oregon, where you can uh, you can kill yourself uh, legally and you can smoke pot legally. So what you do but is there you there are a lot of states where you can you smoke commit pot. you commit you, you take the suicide pill and smoke a joint while you're going. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is Ronnie Bennett, ladies and gentlemen. Time goes by. Net is her blog, and uh, we talk to her every couple of weeks because she's my. My ex-wife, and it's part of the uh, divorce agreement that I have to talk to her every day. <laughs> Here's a question for you. Yes? About that. Yeah? What was yesterday? Let's see here. I have to, Oh, well, that's our wedding anniversary. Yes. You know how I remember it? Normally, I, I can, uh, can I remember our, our wedding anniversary for, for Marjorie and I? I, I, I? They asked me in a court case that we're in. Uh, so when were you and your wife married? And I couldn't remember the date. Oh, no. And and the lawyer for the other side, it was a woman, looked at my wife and goes, just like a guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I love it. But I remember to se September 18th because that was my mother's birthday. That's right. And I always remembered it that way. So, yes. Right. We would have been married how many years if we were still married? 53. Maybe it's better we didn't stay married. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but uh, here, here is what we've been going through, uh, and and it, my audience can relate to it. The new Skype. You you put the new Skype in your new computer, and uh, you just don't know how to. There's no, how to there's use it. No it, way to figure and, it out. And they, they said they went anything. to this new system because it's more self-intuitive. It is so complex and ridiculous that you know the other one was so simple. It was just you know cut and paste. Call the There's number. There's also a distinct lack of words. There are lots of little icons and things like that, but no words. This worries me for the future. <laughs> well, you see, now you've got a new address is what you've got. They gave it to me. I liked my old one. Yeah, yeah. They, But no, but here's what happened. You do have your old one. It's out there. It's that you got a new machine. You installed Skype. It automatically gave you a name. What you could do is sign out of there and sign into your old name, but Have you don't. You know, but you don't. Screen? But you, you don't. You can't even find anything that says sign out or sign. Oh in. yeah, it's I found it. There. It doesn't I, exist. I, I found it. it oh, up at the very top, you know, uh, there's a the, where where your name is. Uh, there are a whole bunch of options, and one of which is sign out. If you hit I those three little those dots, on my screen. they well, aren't there. But you well, not right now because you're talking to me. Oh, when, they weren't there when we were fooling no, around. No, no. When I told you to go to the top of the page and see that your green button. Yeah. Well, that's not a sign yeah, in well, or sign well, out no, button. No. No. Over to the side, there are three dots, and you click on that, and a, a menu comes down, and you can say sign out, and then you sign in with your old name, but you can't if remember. I it. You can't remember the old name, so. <laughs> You're gonna have to keep. Call, you're gonna have to call me from now on because. Uh, I guess so. I mean, I, I guess. call. Wait a minute. Oh, I just they showed me a picture of you, as Ronnie Bennett. Oh, okay. Well, well, at least we got your picture. But I sent you a request to make me a contact, and and you I, didn't. nothing happened. Nothing I never happened. got it. Yeah, it, it's it's screwed, folks. It's just screwed. Something terrible, but what the hell, you know. So what's how, going on in your life? Well, nothing much. Nothing much. Just, uh, you know, seeing doctors and working out. I, I don't know what they have to do with each other, but, you know. Sure they do. They have to do with your health. Yeah. Your picture, you're a little dim today. 
on your picture. You might turn, put the light, put a little more light on you. Put a little more light on you. There we go. Okay, that's better. It, it's mood lighting. Not too much. No, it's not too much. Just fine. Uh, uh, but we'll figure out how to adjust your camera and everything. I mean, I'll give you a call during the week and we'll take care of this. But anyway, when you're not as frustrated. Uh, I'm trying to come down. You you have no idea the past week with a new computer, all the things that have gone wrong. And I maybe fixed half of them. The others one at a time. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, there, there are things that these computer people, these companies do that just drives me crazy. Like windows loves to decide to shut your machine down and install the newest version. Oh, you know what happened for days, for days since I first set this up over a week ago. Yeah. It's been telling me I need to update Windows. Well, you know, that's going to take all your life, so I haven't had time. And finally, this morning, I was up at 5.30. You know, the news is always the same. It's all Trump all the time. So I didn't have to pay attention to the news. And um, so the, and the little notice came up on my screen again, and I thought, okay, I'll do it this morning. I've got four hours and more till I need to talk to Alex. It went till 9.30. We were set for 10. It yeah. took till 9.30 to update Windows. Right. And they could at least do a countdown for you. Oh, you, you've you never you've never had to update uh, 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 the Mac system. The Mac no, system. never had it, a Mac. It, 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 you may as well go on vacation and come back. You know, that's how long it takes. Yeah, i got to tell you this. Many, many years ago, I've forgotten who it was, but it was some big-time... And it was a name we knew then, and I never can make it come to mind. A big-time head of a giant, oh, Barry Diller. Barry That's Diller, right. Barry Diller. And he had quit his big-time Hollywood job, whatever it was at that time. And he announced that he was, this was 20, 30 years ago, that he was going to spend the next year investigating this new thing called the Internet. So he goes away. We don't hear of him publicly uh, for the next year. And then he did an interview or wrote an article. I don't remember what. But he went to, and because of who he is, he got to hang out with all the big name internet people, you know, Bill Gates and um, all the rest of those guys. Anyway, um, and at the end, he announced that this was a very interesting idea. He'd learned a lot, it had all kinds of places to go. He said, but in terms of most of us using one of these things, it's not going to be useful until it's as easy to use as a light switch. I have never forgotten that. He's right. Well, no, and he's absolutely right. And still haven't gotten that far. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I'll tell you, uh, the uh, the iPhone, uh, uh, some of the smartphones, uh, the uh, uh, things like the iPad are far more intuitive than anything you do on your you computer. You can't write an article on them. You need a real keyboard and, you know, to well, actually it, write you know, instead I, of it, a little message, how are the you? The newest iPads, you can buy a keyboard for it, you know. Yeah, but you also, I've now got, you know, a great big diagonally 26-inch screen. Yeah. I'm an old lady. I like having the great big screen. Yeah, right. And my eyesight's going, and I need the big screen with the big icons. In the... And it's it's much easier. When I used the little laptop before I got the new computer after the old one broke, Yeah. That I mean, I was like this squinting, trying, even when you make that. I have never been able, I've there. never been able to get into laptops. Uh, they just don't seem to have enough going for them where I can use them like I can use a powerful machine. Mm-hmm. You know? So, you know, uh, I, I mean, I wouldn't want to do this interview uh, on, a, uh, on, a, on a laptop because I've got the, the, the thing that's recording the, uh, the video and the, uh, that program and then your picture. And, you know, I, that, on a little screen, I would be going blind. Trying yes, to do that. that's why I like my great big yeah. screen. It's really wonderful. It's bigger than my TV screen. Practice. So what's new in the land of old people? Now, I had you on a couple of weeks ago on the radio. Uh, and right, yeah, that's right, I forgot. Where yes. I, I admitted to my age on national radio. You haven't done that before. No, I mean, I, I just said I was going to commit an act that is surely a career killer uh, on this program tonight. And I said, at the end of it tonight, I'll tell you how old I am. And what yeah, happened? Yeah. After I said you? I'd have everybody guess at how old I am, and they just go on the on the on the uh, computer, look up Wikipedia, and find out immediately <laughs> how old I am. So I wasn't going to make it a guessing game. And, and my whole point was, you know, that very few people admit how old they are. I mean, in show business, 
you, you, you have to pretty well figure through history how old they must be now. But they don't come out and go, hey, it's my, you know, you know who did the other day uh, on an interview I saw? Jane Fonda. I mean, she said her age for many, many years. Yeah, she has never not said her age. She's been very good about that. Yes, she looks 40. And they say you'll look great. Well, of course, if I had that many facelifts, so would I. But, you know, <laughs> she's had the work done, but she looks fabulous, you know. Well, see, I think that that's, a, I don't like that because it makes the whole world feel like looking old is a terrible thing. And, and it's not. It's not. I look in the mirror now. I know that I have aged dramatically since the sur surgery 14, yeah. 15 months ago. Uh, and I really see it in my face. And I'm still fascinated. I mean, I watched this particular line. Two or three years ago, it wasn't there. Then it was just barely there when I smiled. <laughs> and I, every once in a while when I was, you know, standing near a mirror, yeah. oh, gee, it got a little deeper. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with looking old. But I was saying that most people in show business do not admit their age. Uh, and especially in certain fields, they will lie about it. For instance, writers in television, you're washed up at 40. Yeah, but see, the problem is you're, you're washed up. The lying doesn't help because you don't get a job without meeting them in person. Yeah, but if you're, let's say, you're 45, let's say, and you say, no, I'm 38, you can get away with it. Okay. But I mean, yes, see, every time famous people do that, they reinforce the idea that old is bad and it gets worse and worse and worse. So more. Did you know that age discrimination on average mm -hmm. in the workplace begins as young as 40 and for women, it begins as young as 35. Yeah. Well, think about that. If you get out of school these days, if you do an advanced you degree, got 15 so good years, three or 24, you've got 10 or 15 <laughs> years before they tell you you don't know anything anymore. Get out of here. But I see it as in that period of time, from my own personal experience and yeah. friends, yeah. that you're just hitting your stride. You're just getting good at what you do by that time, 35 mm -hmm. or 40. Yeah. And so the whole world is losing the expertise that people have um, accumulated in that period of time and would really be ready to roar at whatever they do. Exactly. But then you're told that you're too old. Yeah. Speaking of which, I want to ask you a question. Yeah that one of my blog readers emailed to ask if it was worth discussing, and I think it is. Um, when do you think someone is too old to be president? You know, I was thinking about that the other day. And uh, I don't, I think in this day and age, the job of the president takes a lot more physically than it used to. Oh. Uh, I think it's just uh, there, there, there are more places to go. More, you know, in the old days. Uh, no, 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 it got, no, 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 no. Uh, That's just Trump. You've gotten too used to Trump. Other people didn't get on an airplane every other day. Well, uh, uh, Obama was the perfect age for a president, I think, in a lot of ways, because he had the vim, the vigor. He had uh, a part of it is your uh, your appearance publicly and how old people perceive you to be, because. Uh, uh, you know, he wasn't too young to, for them to say, oh, he's a kid trying to run the country, and he wasn't too old that people would go, look at that old codger. I mean, I look at a guy like Grassley on that committee with, uh, with Bart Simpson or whoever's running for Supreme Court, um, and I look at him and I go, y you shouldn't be there. You're too old for this. Because he's, he's a... He's, Just because he's, you don't agree because, with him politically? No, because he, he cannot think out of the box at his age. Neither can a whole lot of 20 now, I can't either. If I could think out of the box. But young people can't. If I could, be, if I could think out of the box, I'd be a bigger success in the Internet. Okay. Alex, cre Alex age has nothing to do with creativity. Nothing. Uh, I think it does. I disagree. And some, you can read all kinds of things uh, that will tell you that. Well, I will say that, that you, uh, at a certain age, you stop creating and you start working on old tapes. In other words, you're good at your craft. There's no question about that. But you're not going to come up with the new revolutionary ideas you did when you were younger. Not very many people ever do when they're young, and a lot of old people continue to do that. Well, I mean, just a few years ago, I came up with this citizens panel format, which is, is new and different. But that's, I think, my last great idea. 
I, I think I'm finished being able to think that far out of the box that I can come up with something that's just weird and different. Okay. Weird is not necessarily good, nor is different good. There are all kinds of ways to create new things, new ideas, new ways of doing things that aren't revolutionary in that sense. Yeah. That you're saying, big big deal. No, very few people have a big deal new idea, ever. Yeah. Uh, now, you're saying, how old to be president? Let's get back to that one. So I, you know, I, I said that I thought that, you know, 70 you're starting to push it as president. You know, uh, by then you should have been an ex-president, you know, and, and be able to console Alex, the newest president. you are president. so ageist. I'm not ageist. It really surprised me. Hell, I'm older than you are. Screw you. <laughs> how, how can I be ageist? You know, you well, asked me how yourself. old do I think a president should be. And I think that, well, I mean, we can't include Trump because Trump's a different story altogether. He was insane. Why not? He's 71. He was, he, too old? he was insane 30 years ago. Okay, so whatever, you know, bad ideas he had, he had back then. Um, I, just, um, I just don't think that with the job that needs to be done today, uh, someone who is not physically up to the job should take it. But that could be at any age. Well, that could be at any age, yeah, yeah. What about mentally up for it? Well, I, you know, look, are you going to tell me that certain things haven't gone with age on you? I have to admit it, you know. I'm slower in terms of, um, <laughs> there are okay. things that are just okay. funny. You and I just you went, know, you and I, was try, I was changing the bed this morning and going to do laundry. And I think of all the household chores they are. The one I've always hated the most is changing the bed sheets, but it's really gotten harder as I've gotten older. It's really hard to get those damn fitted sheets around the mattress. It's, and I, I, every time I do it, I ask myself, when will I not be able to do this anymore? Somebody's got to figure out a better way. But that doesn't affect my brain. Okay, but let me give you an example of what we're talking about. It just happened a few minutes ago. You and I and Skype. Yeah. Uh, you were completely flummoxed by it. Yeah, you know, that has and, nothing to do with age. That has a I, bad I, I, know, I think that if we had gone through that conversation 20 years ago, you would have been able to help solve the problem a lot better. You would have been a no. lot, you would have been a lot Not more. that program. It's really awful. It is a shitty program. No, I know it's a shitty program, but your frustration level was higher than it would have been 20 years My, ago. 20, oh, you have no idea how much I'd calm down if you don't remember <laughs> 50 years ago. You don't remember the time we had a fight and I pulled the door off the hinge? I don't remember that. Did you really? In, in Houston, the bedroom door, I went to slam the door and the damn thing came off well, the Well, that, that you slammed it and you didn't rip it off the hinges. It just fell by itself. Oh, no, it didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we, I was, whatever it was, which I've long forgotten. There, I was, there, there were many so doors in our in our relationship that were broken and phones that were ripped out of the wall. <laughs> I never yeah. did that. Did you? Well, remember. yeah, of course. You know, in the old days, here here's how life has changed. This is I love the old phones. Here's why: uh, you you could take a phone, rip it out of the wall, throw it across the room, okay, and it wouldn't break. Then you could take that phone. Find the two things uh, that hooked into the wall, get a screwdriver, put it back in the wall, and you got your phone back again. And I felt that for years, you know, AT&T, when other people were coming out with phones and so on, should have said, remember that time you pulled the phone out of the wall because you were mad and you threw it against the wall and it didn't break? We're AT&T. We make a good phone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> they made those things so they wouldn't break because they knew that they were going to be in the hands of the average people. I mean, they weighed a ton. You know, yeah. you could use them as a weapon. Uh, there was one time during a blackout in New York that it must have been that I had a wireless phone or mm -hmm. something Yeah. because it wasn't working during the blackout. And I scrounged around in the closet and I found one of those old phones that you're talking about yeah. that you can barely lift. They're so yeah. heavy and strong. Yeah. You know. And I plugged it into the wall, and I could make phone calls. <laughs> see? See? <laughs> We're AT&T. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now all I've got is I've got a phone now. I've got
got a phone now that when I hold it up to my face, it recognizes me. Oh, you know, I was thinking about that the other day. Yeah. That um, should I drop dead, which, you know, at some point I will. Yeah. Um, and the person who's going to take care of everything. Mm-hmm. I, when I was thinking about doing that on my phone, I, I, I'm already doing fingerprints, but maybe doing the facial recognition. How's she going to get into my phone? If you have, it, what, what there is is you do have the facial recognition. That's the best. But you also have a, uh, a passcode so that if it doesn't work, let's say I know your passcode, but your face is what's recognized, and I put it up, it will then say enter passcode. You put the passcode in, the phone opens up. So, okay, anybody that, get, that knows how to hack things can get into your phone well, with facial recognition. You have a fail <laughs> so safe. Like, you're yeah. saying it's useless. No, it's not useless. It gets you into the phone. I don't know if, however, no, no, things... I'm saying having it using facial recognition, if someone can hack into your phone and get the passcode, what's the point? Well, if they, if, if they can get the passcode, that doesn't mean they can use it to buy things with. I think you still have to have your facial recognition for that. Like I have, uh, you know, Apple Pay, for instance, with credit cards in there. And I look at this, and when I want to use it, I double click. You put your it. credit cards in your phone? Yeah, look, watch. I would never watch do that. Watch this, watch this. Wait a minute, hold on a second. What, what's that about? <laughs> Listen, to, we're doing a TV show. Come on. Oh, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Stop it. Cancel. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, hey, here, go away. Go Alex away. Alex is supposed to be having a conversation. What? What is that there for? See Done. what I mean? Done. None of these things work right. Save photo. I don't care. Anyway, here, here's what here's what what happens. You double click on this, and what happens? Is, well, it should happen. There it is. See, there's my credit card. What did you double click. I double click on the side here, and oh, and, and there's my uh, credit card, and then it mm -hmm. says uh, facial recognition because it wants the facial recognition. Well, it's not doing it now because I didn't do it quick enough. Uh, but uh, if I uh, if I, if I do this again, there we go. It did the passcode. Now it's ready to go. It just looked at my face and said, okay, that's you. You can now use that for your face to, you know, do your, <laughs> well, anyway. It's all too much. I, I have a phone that recognizes my face, which is more than my wife does. So, you know. <laughs> Come on. I'm pretty sure she'd recognize you from across the street. <laughs> I haven't even seen you in person in years and years and years, and I would recognize yeah, you. Yeah, you probably would. Yeah. So, but uh, no, but getting back to the president, I just think I would like a younger president than, than you know. I felt, for instance, Bernie Sanders was really pushing it. You know, he should be an advisor to a president, but he, you know, I, I think that he wouldn't. I don't have the strength to do a lot of things now. You know, just the effort that it takes. Uh, I don't think today, for instance, a Franklin Roosevelt could have been president with his, with his polio. It would have been just Hi. too, because I think it would, be, it would have been too much of a, of a, uh, of a strain on him. It was enough of a strain. It. it was enough of a strain when he, he did it, and but, he did quite nicely. Yeah, but every time he took a trip to Yalta or someplace like that, it took <laughs> a few more years off his life. I mean, he was that fragile, you know. Until he died of old age. No, he died of a heart attack. All right, old age. No, he Most wasn't that old. Most people die he, of heart he, attacks, he was only not about, young people. He was only like about 62, something like that. He was not In those old. those days, people died at that I age. guess, yeah, I guess that was old back then. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, that was, what, 1942 or something, one or two that he here, died? Here, here's the old age story that really amazed me, okay? John McCain's mother. Oh, isn't that a wonderful story? Is still alive. Yeah. She lived long enough to bury her 82-year-old yeah, son. Yeah. yeah. Shouldn't have yeah. had to do that. I mean, 105 is she or 106, something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Speaking of old, my favorite thing this week that I found, Yeah. and I don't know how long ago it happened, but a little tiny short piece of video that I ran last Saturday on my blog of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg being interviewed. Mm -hmm. the interviewer asked her, um, when will there be enough wo women on the Supreme Court? 
And she smiled her little smile, and she said, when there are nine. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, yeah, yeah. Notorious RBG. Yes, uh, my yeah. hero. Yeah. I want to grow up to be RBG. She's, a, she's amazing. She's amazing. But, I mean, she ain't going nowhere. She knows that when she, if she quits, you know, it's all over for the Supreme Court, and she doesn't want to do it. I think she's going to just f kick and scream until she knows that somehow there'll be a more liberal justice put there to replace her, you know. So. Well, we'll see what happens with Mr. Kavanaugh. Oh, well, we'll have to see what happens to Mr. Kavanaugh. Hey, listen, we believe it or not, 25 minutes have just flown by. Yeah, well, you know, we shouldn't have done all that thing with the phone. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't have done that thing with the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, you can go to uh, timegoesby.net uh, and uh, read her blog. It's all about getting old, and all of you are getting older, so maybe you should take a look at it. If nothing more, she's kind of the sac Sacagawea of aging. She Why will tell you. What because, does that mean? Well, Sacagawea led the Lewis and Clark party across the country, <laughs> and you're leading these people into old age. I mean, no matter how old you are, you should read this because you better find out what it's like to get old. You know, I've got a lot of 90 something readers. Not a lot, but quite a few. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap. The Great American Broadcast Network. Gee, I just blast you out with that. Uh, boy, that was loud, wasn't it? Let's see here. Are these others loud? Celebrating four no, years. That's fine. That's fine. That's it's cool. I just don't know why that one was particularly loud. So, wait a minute. Celebr no, those all sound good. Well, anyway, so what the hell? I'm not gonna uh, not gonna work on fixing stuff while you're listening to us, right? Okay, it's Wednesday night. Wednesday night is usually a slow night. Phil, it's a Phil-free night. Phil is not going to call tonight, so if you want to get a word in age-wise, tonight's the night to do it. Also, uh, might I add, and appropriately so, that uh, uh, who else said they weren't going to call? Uh, 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 Ray Renati said he wasn't going to call tonight. They all like to report to me when they're not going to be able to be on the show. <laughs> And I, uh, I, I kind of uh, just uh, uh, appreciate that. It's like they, they want to say, hey, please excuse my son from the panel tonight, the citizens panel. What the citizens panel is, in case you're not fully aware of it, is it's a, uh, well, for, to begin with right now, it's a blank screen right there. Uh, but uh, what happens is people call and we get more than one person on at a time. And because we have more than one person on at a time, it becomes a lively little go-round and discussion. And uh, certain nights I sit here and I say, we're opening the lines, and boom, 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 I've got people calling the show. And then other nights, uh, I say, we're opening the line, and I sit here talking to myself. So uh, it, it's, you know, it's up to you. Uh, but give us a uh, give us a call. Uh, I'm in very good moods lately because I've been taking an antidepressant. Not because I'm depressed, but my doctor. You have these numb this numb feet thing from a nerve uh, that's being crushed by my spine, um, and he said take this. It'll it'll probably help with the uh, pain and uh, mitigate the uh, the numbness. So. I'm taking it, and it's an antidepressant called Elevil, or it's uh, actually it has a, a generic name on it, uh, uh, amitriptyline. Yeah, amitriptyline. Uh, and so, really, I'm I'm been in a very very good mood. Oh, here comes Tom Yamaguchi, ladies and gentlemen, uh, first one up to join the panel. Whenever he hears that Phil isn't here, he's the he's the first one to call. Hello, Thomas. Hello there. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Yeah, yeah. I just have to admit that uh, I get annoyed when you say that the program always depends on one person. And that's true. No, it doesn't. It, no, it doesn't. I just know. I just know. When, we, when Phil says he's not going to call, I know that I'm going to. He's always the constant. Okay. <laughs> So I know that I'll be, it'll be a little quiet. But look, already we got Scott Bodiger here as well. Hello, Scott. 
I'm always here, but I got no life, so what do I care? Yeah, well, I have no life either. That's why I'm doing this thing. You think if I had a life, I would be doing... I, you know, I probably... I'm thinking if I had a uh, radio show somewhere every day, I might still do this. Maybe for an hour, not two hours. Yeah. But I'd still keep doing it because I like... You know, I like it. It's, uh, I'm, it's spending time with my friends every night. Yeah. You well, know? I, I like it too. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a strange kind of thing, but I think of you as my friends. And, I, yeah. and I've never met you person to person, Scott. I've met Tom... Uh, but I've, I met Phil, uh, but I've never met Ray. So think, huh? So you think you met Phil? Oh, I think I'm, he thinks he met me is what yeah. it is, uh, you know. Uh, and he, but he seems to know the names of some of my ex-girlfriends, so I assume he knows something about me. So do I now. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah right. If you listen to me for any amount of time, my whole life's an open book. Susan. You know, I'm perfect for the Supreme Court because I'm hiding yeah. no secrets at all. Right, right, right. right. I mean, if I uh, tried to rape a woman and put his, my hand over her mouth, I'd probably tell you the story, you know. <laughs> so you told us some some stories. I don't think you want to repeat again. Exactly, too, anyway. exactly. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I, you know, I just, I just, uh, I, I consider you guys friends. This is, I know it's strange because, uh, well, I mean, uh, Tom, I do know. Okay. Tom and I have, have met on many an occasion uh, because we, uh, we, you know, he was a fan of mine in San Francisco and has pretty well documented my entire life. He knows, <laughs> he knows more about my life than I do. Tom needs to get a life, apparently. Yeah, well, he knows more about my life than I do. I mean, I, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know that. I don't know as much. About, I, didn't I have to call you once or talk to you a couple of times or write you, Tom, when I was doing the life in the passing lane because I couldn't remember certain things? I just remember the last time we dealt with something like this is you were um, prevented from editing your own wikipedia page and so you call me to help you <laughs> edit it for you no i could edit lucky. it but it still says on my wikipedia page it looks like the person who it's about uh, edited this or something well i mean come on there were a couple of uh, flaws in it and statements that were wrong and i was just correcting them yeah. and i'm not allowed to do that to my own wikipedia page fuck wikipedia yeah. you know yeah. Ridiculous. Uh, 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 hello, uh, John what? Rockwell's here. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, I, yeah, I mean, it's been a while. I'm just, I'm not even sure how long I can stay, but I did want to call, check in, and see how people were doing. Yeah. Why haven't we heard from you in a while? Uh, partly trying to get, you know, get, looking, you know, trying to get more work going and, uh, and stuff like that. I got, uh, I got doctor's appointments tomorrow and Friday, but they're all basic, you know, the, the cardio thing, you know, it's, yeah. uh, I'm okay with it, but it's just, uh, so I, I want to get up early and not have to, you know, when I, if I get to bed before midnight, then I'm, you know, feel better in the morning. So, yeah. so I haven't been hanging out doing the late night thing. I haven't been on Jack's show either. I haven't been on anybody's show. <laughs> yeah. Well, we miss For you. For a while. We miss you. I, I sent you uh, some photographs. Um, yes, you did. Because yes, you uh, did. Uh, uh, early I, days, the early, the early uh, midnight blue it, days. Well, what that. I wanted was uh, it, I showed you a picture of a sex show on Forty Second Street, and I think right. the woman in the picture was Wendy O. Williams. I'm pretty sure. I think it, it probably and I think was it is. Because, now that I look yeah. at it more and I look at pictures of her, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, she's not as was wild. Pretty young Wendy O. Williams, and yeah. uh, you know. Well, she, she didn't have a mohawk, and she didn't wasn't oh, no, as severe much. looking. But you know, but she had been a dancer at the same at this topless place, and that uh, her boyfriend <laughs> slash manager. Uh, was involved with, so it makes sense. Well, that, that was, was that was uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Rod Swenson. Rod Swenson, and yeah. Rod um, used to come up to Midnight Blue, and I would be editing tapes for them with Wendy. Mm -hmm. And these were yeah. tapes they were doing to show at the Show World Center because they had been well, doing yeah. they had been doing live shows, but they were getting afraid that maybe they were going to get busted. So if they ran film or tape. Uh, yeah, video, and they had a big projection TV. Yeah, back when it was projection TV, yeah. right? 
and and, and then, that's where that's from where that, they started. I also edited some stuff for Rod, and that's how I got involved with when with with uh, the group, the Plasmatics, was editing some of the and helping. Well, I think with you, I, recording I think, some of their, their yeah. videos. I the think you I think you took over from me editing for them because I got I tired so, of doing yeah. it. I had other things I had to do. And, right, right. Uh, and right. then he went on, started the Plasmatics, and Wendy O became a national sensation. Absolutely. You know? uh, there's one thing I, I, I hesitate. I've been wanting to, I know how to contact Rod, but I think he is really out of the, I mean, I'd love to find if he, if he has some of the video material, especially not just plasmatic stuff like the, the rock videos we did pre pre uh, MTV style, but yeah. say, same idea um, with a lot of people that we know in it, you know, I mean, they're some of the, the blue people and other people were like, uh, um, you know, background people in, in various, you know, uh, one of the songs, fast food service was shot at a, at an old di old cafeteria and everybody is like everybody we could grab. You know, was I just there. wish I had a copy of the tape I edited with Wendy and some other woman having sex in a hundred pounds of peanut butter. I missed that one. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. No, what no, I, no. what I said to Rod was, and, and it's true. I said, Rod, this is art. He says, oh, you found me out. <laughs> he said. Well, he was known, yeah. Yeah, he, he known said. He said. As a conceptual artist. He said, he, yeah, he's, well, he was very well known as a conceptual artist. Yeah. And he said to me that he wanted to bring art to 42nd Street, and this was his subversive way of doing it. <laughs> oh, yeah, he I'll said, these that, guys are sitting in a darkened room with their hands in their pants uh, watching art. He said, you know, it doesn't get better than that, you know. And certainly, I, yeah, certainly makes it, raises the level of, uh, you know, quality up a little bit. And that's when Rod and I bonded, you know, over that. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. Hel He's, uh, Hel hello to Jeff Stein, by the way, who's joined us. Ah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it really was um, uh, really nice. Um, uh, you know, they were, I liked her a lot. I really mm -hmm. like. I did too. You know, I, the I, last I got time to know I them really well, of course. Uh, yeah. From uh, I should I should dig around somewhere. I have a photograph. Actually, my our mutual friend uh, was uh, Steve Smith, who was Jim's friend too. Mm -hmm. uh, they would come in occasionally. Had a co I got a picture of the f the the uh, record cover for the forty five of one of the one of the one of the plasmatic ones. It was one called Monkey Soup, and it was Wendy sort of posing on the on the ground with a guy, a hairy guy with a with an ape outfit with a with a gorilla mask on behind it, mm -hmm. who happened to be. <coughs> I don't think I ever told you that. I am I am I am I am semi naked on a plasmatics cover. Oh really, John? <laughs> yes, definitely. I got I, I've got it here somewhere. Can you tell me how well, to avoid that? Can you, know you tell me how to avoid that album cover? Uh, What's not, yeah, really. No, it was a forty-five. It was it was one of the one of their forty-five. Kids, in case you're listening, a forty-five is a record about seven inches in diameter with a big round hole in the middle, which could substitute as a girl. So, uh, yes, Jeff. Uh, probably. <laughs> uh, not too many years ago, my granddaughter says, "What's a record?" Mm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, I forgot oh. to tell the audience out there. Records were these rounds, round <laughs> objects that you used to put on a turntable. Wait a minute, let me explain what a turntable is. It was a, 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 a flat thing about the size of a huge pancake, and it rotated, and you put the disc on it, which had a hole in the middle, and then you put, a, uh, you put the, uh, the uh, uh, player arm on the, what do we call it, the, uh, the phonograph oh, the arm. Tone arm. The tone the, arm was on the there. The tone arm on there, like and the needle, player, the needle played bigger. the music. Yeah, it was a, it's like a CD player does, but it was bigger and slower. <laughs> do you realize, compared to what we do now, that is awfully complicated? It is. You know? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, compared to getting something off the internet and, and playing it on as an MP3 file, absolutely. I, I don't. I, I don't know that I listen any other way to music. But you know what we've done though. Here's what's happened. This is sad, uh, kids. If you're listening, you don't know what really good sound is, mm. because 
MP3s dumb down the sound of, of audio and makes it, you think you're getting a lot of bass and things like that, but it's, it's not as pristine as an analog recording. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, kids don't know the sound of really good hi-fi. I remember when it first, when hi-fi came out. Oh, excuse me, kids, oh, yeah. kids. Hi-fi <laughs> means high fidelity, <laughs> which would, shall we say, was the precursor of, oh, I don't know. Stereo. Stere and, uh, well, 4K or whatever, you yeah. know. Right, pre here, yeah. But I remember getting a stereo album. And... Um, I, in fact, I, I, I bought a stereo on one of the first stereo albums, and then you could buy, the, all you had to do was buy a needle to put in the mm -hmm. tone arm that was stereo. Right. But then again, it was designed but for then, stereo, yeah. then you had to have a stereo to play it on, and I didn't, but I did have two different amplifiers, two, two so speakers. I split the signal between two amplifiers and played the yeah, stereo. That's what my dad did. And, yeah. and I was sitting there just in awe of what I was listening to. Mm -hmm. You know? My dad did that. We had a, we had a huge. Uh, huge clipped speakers and all the thing. He became a real hi-fi nut yeah. in the late in the late fifties, nineteen fifties. And when we when they sold their house, and when Dad retired in the early seventies, the people who bought it specifically wanted that stereo that that old stereo built-in stereo system. He did. They wanted him to. They wanted to keep it. <laughs> like, oh, by the like, way, sure. by the way, kids, uh, there were things called amplifiers that had giant <laughs> vacuum tubes in them that got really hot. Mm -hmm. What's a vacuum tube? Oh, vacuum yeah. tube. <laughs> the world of anachronism. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I'll tell you something. The the the, the um uh, I remember the uh, what was it? The Macintosh amplifiers. Yeah. They first came those out in like the fifties. When you put one of those things in with some good speakers, you could literally blow the room out. Oh, I yeah. mean, you know, and, and you, you folks, you've never heard sound like today. You don't get that kind of sound. Um. Mm -hmm. uh, the original hi-fi was much better fidelity than what you're getting. You're getting that pumped into your ears, and you think it's okay, but it's really quite flat in its audio range. Am mm. I right, guys? Am I well, wrong I about you this? you don't really hear. Yeah, huh? it's I all hear. compressed. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, that's a big Do you problem. remember hi-fi? As uh, an audio Tom, guy, of course you, I, do. you know, I deal mostly with, with spoken words, so, you know, good old basic monaural MP3 yeah. files are what they want. They don't need anything fancy for for just voice yeah but if it was music you know there's a there's a whole different thing about that um if you were i mean if you were a you know uh, a, a symphony orchestra or something and you wanted to produce you know music yeah. albums and things like that you still yeah that's going to be the best way the stereo you, you see it's, their, it's, their it's, vinyls coming yeah. back they're definitely not too strong, well, but it, it's uh, it's I've run a into some youngest people. It's a with, it's a connoisseur's uh, market. Vinyl that they went, you know. It's a connoisseur's market. Uh, yeah, vinyl. Yeah. I mean, it, it, these kids wouldn't know what to do with a vinyl record today. You know, mm -hmm. I'd have to go through the explanation I just went through to tell them how to play it. What you have to put the needle on the thing? How do you carry that around on uh, in on, uh, you know in your pocket? <laughs> Let's hope not. Yeah. Well, listen, I got an iPhone buy here. Needles anymore? What? Can you even buy like stylus and needles and stuff? Oh yeah, oh, oh, oh I'm yeah. sure you can. I'm Absolutely. sure you can. There's a whole market out there. There are a whole bunch of people who are connoisseurs of vinyl, and there and a lot of the companies release a lot of the music on vinyl for that market. So okay. there's still a vinyl market out there, and and it, it I would love to hear it sometime because it probably sounds great, you know, but um, a stereo. What well, stereo first came out mid '50s, right? Uh, mid to late fifties, yeah. Yeah, because I remember really the first. Didn't, we didn't really get a lot of stereo. I think, well, the the classical music started doing that, but where, as a kid, I heard it, were on, like, some of the singles for like the Beach Boys and the Beatles and stuff. Yeah. Where it was, it was stereo, but it was like, you know, John and George were on one on the left channel, and Paul and Ringo were on the right channel. It wasn't well mixed. Uh, there was a place that I used to go to near where I worked that had, it was a, the burger joint and the pizza joint. And they had, uh, they were connected when, and they used the one CD player to play their, their, or to play the music. And one side, the, uh, the, the speakers only played the left channel <laughs> and the other side only the right channel. So I'd be sitting there having lunch and you would hear the beach boys 
you'd hear all the instrumental, and then out of nowhere you'd hear fun, 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 and then would stop because that was the only thing that was only singing that was on that channel. That was like early stereo. They didn't hadn't really figured out how to sort of cross well, for radio with, stations you know, for stereo radio stations. They had to actually get a leak over from the right to the left so mm -hmm. that people who had mono uh, radios. Right. Wouldn't have Otherwise it all it phase out. Phase out or something. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. it would. It, you wouldn't hear. But the thing like was, that. there's a there's a, there's a couple of cuts on the Beatles albums where they're all on the left channel and the music is on the right channel and you can actually just play the one channel and pretend you're a Beatle, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. that, but it's like well, they're really people, early. Yeah. They're really early stuff where they rejiggered it for stereo. Uh, mm -hmm. Because they right. remastered for stereo, yeah. as they used to yeah. say. I remember that it must have been the, the mid '50s to late '50s when stereo came out. Because the first Frank Sinatra album in stereo, what was it? Do you know? God, no idea. It was actually recorded in stereo. Hmm. Uh, it was "Come Fly with Me." Oh, okay. I but, wouldn't remember yeah, that. The that was the first. Of, uh, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. it, there were a whole bunch of Capitol albums about the same time that came out in stereo, the first Nat Cole stereo and so on. But Oh, sure. You know, all of a sudden people were going out and buying stereo, so now you had to have stuff. But the, originally the stuff that was put out in stereo uh, was mm -hmm. were classical records. You yeah, know. I think that was they considered that was that was like the first the uh, the first FM radio music was was classical. They didn't think that that kids would want to hear rock and roll on uh, on on fm radio they were listening on little uh, transistor radios kids a transistor radio is a small <laughs> yes a transistor radio is yeah yeah usually mono that you could hold up to your ear it was sort of like a sort of like the old walk well you know except you, yeah but you want you, a speaker you want to know why radio is dying one of the reasons one ears, of the reasons yeah. it's dying is because the only place you're actually going to have a radio is in your car Mm -hmm. Elsewhere, mm -hmm. you know, uh, your iPhone, I guess you could pick yeah. up an, uh, a, a radio station through iHeartRadio on the Internet. But mm -hmm. basically, yeah. uh, you're going to listen to your own music and your own programming on your, on your uh, what do you call it? Now, I don't own a car, so I never listen I, to radio. I, I never mm -hmm. listen to radio. And now cars have, uh, now cars have uh, a USB ports so you can, you can play your music from your iPhone through the car stereo, through yes. the car stereo if you want. You yeah. don't need to turn the radio on yeah. to have Bluetooth music. Bluetooth even. What? USB. Yeah, Bluetooth. And Bluetooth. 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 Box. Yeah. 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 You got Fancy And stuff. even video for when you're parked and you want to watch a DVD or something. Right. Yeah, well, yes. For when you're parked. Good. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> Let's not watch it while we're driving. Thank hey, you. Let's say well, there's hello, preventative let's, measures in the radios yeah. that the, in the radio systems and the stereo systems that prohibit you oh, from for the, for the watching car? Yeah. anything while the vehicle is in motion, right. either right. as a driver or as I believe do, do as any a passenger. Of, oh, even in the back. Let me, let me know, ask you. Do, do, do well, any, not in the back, maybe. In the back. No, the do back. Any, any of you, the, do any yeah. of you listen to radio outside of a car? I do. Not not you do, Tom. Uh, yeah, I do. I have a radio right here in my uh, bedroom. Yeah. So yes. you're the, you're the last one doing it, I guess. Huh? I'm the last one. Well, no, no. Two other people. Yeah. Uh, Patrick. Their hands. Yeah, I've got a radio in my bedroom. Um, it's a clock radio, and every morning it wakes me up, and I listen to my talk radio while I'm getting ready, and. Um, and but I, it's talk radio. That's the thing. That's where radio went. Everybody, it went from. From, from playing music to playing Rush Limbaugh. You know. Well, I don't understand how these music stations can even acquire a decent-sized audience considering the fact that you've got all the music you need in your back pocket, you know? Mm. I mean, mm. uh, it, it, uh, I have 256 uh, uh, gigabytes on my iPhone. Give it time. How much music can I put on there? I could put every library I ever owned, okay? <laughs> what do you mean, give what give time? Give it time. If uh, there ever comes a time when uh, an act through an act of Congress or whatever decides to make uh, Internet radio as uh, pervasive as FM, AM, and XM, mm -hmm. yeah, FM and AM, they're fucked. Probably XM, too, or Sirius. Well, Sirius both, is, it, it, Sirius is living on a, on a, XM is living on kind of a false economy because mm -hmm. really 
most people would rather just hear the hear the music and if they just want to hear the music they have it already and they just and their cars most cars have a usb port so you can play your your uh your uh you know iphone in there or uh, uh or i would argue, i would take that a step further alex i'd say that most of our economy in 2018 is predicated most of our economy is predicated on a false economy yeah, yeah, but it, but the <laughs> thing is, radio, the thing is, I mean, the other thing about TV. the other thing about satellite radio, nobody ever mentions. I had a, I rented a satellite radio when I was in California once, and I was up in the redwoods, and I drove through the redwoods. I couldn't get Sirius XM. Why? Tree, because bad. the trees were blocking the signal. Now that wouldn't happen if I was, for instance. Going somewhere where I had, where they had, uh, you know, citywide Wi-Fi or whatever, 4K, if, what, what, what is it, uh, uh, what's the current uh, uh, method of, of having, you know, a signal coming to your phone uh, or into your car? Um, well, Wi-Fi is one of them, yeah. Well, not, not, not Wi-Fi, but what oh, is no. it? Uh, what, what is it? It's 4G, 4G. If you have yeah. 4G and you can get it in your car, forget it. The whole game's over with. And that's the way it's going now. So why are the, you know, pretty soon they're going to go, do you want this, uh, you're gonna, we're going to give you the serious radio. I don't want it. I don't need it. You know, it's just oh, going to become, a, it's just going to become, it's going to become a brick in my dashboard. Yes, yeah. Tom. <laughs> yes, Tom. Yeah, actually, I have a online subscription. I only listen online. I don't have a radio. And uh, what's really great is is the on-demand feature. So if I can't listen to something live, I can catch on-demand. You know, it's the programs that are for uh, at least a week. So I always kept, keep in touch that way. Yeah, but they haven't sold that product. They haven't really sold it. They keep selling the they, – they keep relying on the satellite business. Well, I'm, they, I'm, they, they, push, they push their uh, online subscription. Do they? Oh, oh, yeah. Well, I haven't been there in a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The uh, I, there, there's one. I, I only know of one town that does it for sure, but I think Atlanta has it, where you can get serious satellite reception through like. Uh, uh, oh, oh no, that's also New York and a lot of other major cities. The reason is, is yeah. that the satellite signal gets fucked in big cities right, because right. of the tall uh, buildings. And, and so and like when that, I was yeah, there, they the, had gone to the FCC and gotten permission to put in repeaters in every major city in the United States. So right. when you're driving around, you're not really listening to satellite radio in the city. You're listening to satellite repeaters. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, that, Absolutely. Yeah. So anyway, but it, it, it all the, the whole the whole landscape of everything has changed and and with uh, for more and more 4G going into cars um, you're going to find that uh, that will overtake radio completely people will go I just want the 4G so I can you know I can play all the stuff on the internet yeah. mm -hmm. you know all the all the like drivel the all the drivel on the internet <laughs> you know. yeah like this show like this show <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Absolutely. You in my car, yeah. You know, I, we have absolutely no. Uh, we 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 we, uh, we will not sell radios in cars. Let me put it that Especially way. Especially when they hear me run my rancid sewer laden mouth. Yeah. Now that's <laughs> trouble. Um, yeah. If they have kids in the back seat, forget it. <laughs> yeah. No. No fucking way. Oh, yeah. no, who is that? Cover guy? your little bastard. You know ears. what? You know what I did? I had a I had a clock radio, and I got rid of it. I replaced it with an Echo. Uh, what's it called? An Echo Spot. It, or, or is it Spot? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Spot, which is like a round thing with a screen in it and everything. And it yeah. ha I can use it as my alarm to wake me up in the morning. Uh, I can uh, have it tuned to, I have it so it, uh, I can wake up to Reuters news on the video <laughs> screen, you know, things like that. So uh, I, I don't even have a radio in the house any longer. Well, I do, but they're not plugged in, you know. For a guy who made his entire career in radio, exactly. <laughs> you know, this, this is, uh, you know, well, they, I just find that what's on is such crap, you know, Great. I mean, talk radio, you mean, do you mean five conservatives on every station across the country? Well, what other choice? I don't really have much of a choice. If I had more of a choice, if I had free 4G and if I had my 
pick of any internet radio station I wanted under the sun yeah. uh, with free connection, then yeah, the, those five conservatives could go fuck themselves with a broken bottle for all I care. But, you know, if there's nothing, it's either that, dead silence, which gets old really quick, and I'm sure Pat, Pat, Mr. Patrick can relate to me on what I'm saying here, because the dead silence gets old really quick, or Justin Bieber, and fuck Bieber. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't heard him recently. I know he's. Am I wrong? He got married, but yeah. I wouldn't even know Michael what he cares. sounded like. You know, I know what he looks like, but I don't know what he sounds like. Do you, do you oh, know what uh, you're Justin? Not Bieber, much. Wait a minute. Well, let me, <laughs> no, Jeff. You're not. Jeff, do you know what you, who, just, how just what you, Justin Bieber sounds like? No. No. How about you, John like Rockwell? Would you? 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 How about you, <laughs> Scott? Do you know what there's Justin there's Bieber sounds there. like? Yeah. <laughs> that was it. I don't and don't know. answer like shit. Do you know what he sounds like? Could you, if he, could you could you identify Justin Bieber if you heard a song on radio by him? Probably not. Yeah. Okay, let me be more. They're else. so similar. Like Everyone so sounds the well, same. What were you saying, Patrick? They they all sound the same. All of the yeah. all of the males have a. And I know this is sexist, and I don't want to hear any bullshit. They all have. <laughs> Feminine sounding voice, and they all have here. this feminine wave that runs through their music. There's, you know, and I'm not a heavy metal guy. I hate punk, but at least you could identify the males. I mean, there's, <laughs> yeah. there's music that family members of mine tell me, "Oh, you've got to listen to," and I'm just gonna throw a name out. It's not even real, but Bob, you know. Danowski. So it's not like <laughs> And then I go on YouTube and I can't tell if it's some girl singing or a guy if I close my eyes. But so Patrick Patrick, you haven't tried Roger Gerbil Asshole. <laughs> you have to listen to him. Roger Roger Gerbil bad. Asshole, I see. Okay. Yeah. Bruno Mars it's, is pretty he's good. related to Richard Gere here. I, I see. Yeah. Ooh. I mean, you 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 look at it. You could tell Sinatra from Willie yeah. Nelson from this one and that one. Nowadays, in all seriousness, the pop. I think the boy groups from the '90s and the early 2000s really ruined. And now, are we sounding? Are we being old here? Let me be uh, honest yeah. about this. Are we, are we being old when we say I that? A detailed explanation as to why you're not sounding old. Because there's a there's a video on YouTube. This guy did his homework. This kid's probably around my age, maybe even younger, maybe five years younger. And he's actually chronicalized how music, the music industry, has taken fewer and fewer risks in backing artists and original sounding music in the course of the last fifty some odd years since like the late fifties into the early sixties. Everything started to delineate and decline up until now. And yeah. he goes into detail on this YouTube video as to how that happened. His name is Thoughty2, if you want to look. His handle goes by Thoughty2, if you want to look him up. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, Thoughty, T H O U G H T Y, number two. And you go on, uh, uh, just type in how music declined over the years on the YouTube search engine, Thoughty2, and you should be able to pull it up. Patrick. Auto tune is the other thing that. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, you know, it, I have to say, I was watching uh, Fleetwood Mac, uh, the dance, the the live uh, concert they gave in, I think it was '97 yeah. when they reunited, and there is nothing like live music from a band that knows what they can do. You know, and that goes for any any band, even if I don't like them. I mean, I would rather listen to Metallica live than this crap that they have now. That it's all auto tune, and you know, mm -hmm. and when they go out live, it's still recorded and they're lip syncing because they can't <clears throat> pass the noise of the stadium, mm -hmm. which I. I mean, how the hell did Jimi Hendrix and, and everybody else make it back then? I mean, you had... Hey, listen, when I, when I was in Houston, Texas, and I was uh, at the Beatles concert we hosted, uh, and the Rolling Stones, too, uh, on stage, there were just about five amps, and, that, and they were all plugged into them, and some microphones, and that was it. 
you know. Now you go into a concert and there's this whole wall of speakers, you know, in back of them that they plug into. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that, that has, that's really been the big seed change. That's one of it's them. It's like the but technology the, improved, but the quality the, diminished. The, Whereas before, the yeah. technology wasn't there and the quality was like sky high. Yeah. And now, like, for instance, I, uh, um, uh, the day I knew that I was getting obsolete was in San Francisco <laughs> on my radio show. So that was a long time ago. Okay, we're not talking about day before yesterday. And I'm, uh, they say, we got so-and-so coming in, and he's really big. He's a very important uh, musician. And I said, okay, well, is he going to play live? And they said, yeah, he's going to play live. And I said, good, bring him in. So they come in, and they set up two turntables. Mm -hmm. And this guy comes in, and oh, I can't remember what his name was. And he starts to go to work, and all he's doing is playing records, and you know, doing some scratches and things like that. Right. And he's, I'm going. He's a DJ, not a... Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is not a musician. I play records and I scratch them every time I try to cue them up. You know. <laughs> I said, "What is this?" And they were trying to tell me, "Oh no, don't, don't, don't say that. Don't upset him. He's the biggest thing going right now." And I'm going, "So this is the future, huh?" You know, where do I because sign up? Because are made of paper mache. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You say one wrong thing and they'll shatter. They'll crumble. Uh, yeah, like paper mache does. But it's it it was it was really my my wake up call that you know someday the biggest people in show business were going to be you know who is it Jack Parr that mm -hmm. said that he believed Jack Parr kids was a television star <laughs> big late night he's there before Johnny Carson okay. And, and he's, he said, was a, well, go ahead. Yeah, he said, yeah, it was Johnny Carson. Right. I, I said, uh, hey, kids. Um, uh, but no, uh, uh, the, what was I going to say? Um, Jack Parr had a quote. Oh, Jack, Jack Parr had a quote. And the quote was, he said, the way things are going, the biggest act in show business is going to be a guy who rents out Carnegie Hall, comes on stage and starts his lawnmower. <laughs> you know, and, and that's kind of what things have become. You know, every day mm -hmm. I watch TMZ. I don't know why live, TMZ live. I don't know why I watch it. It's a fun little show. I like the way they interact with each other. They're kind of goofy and I don't know if oh, you've I ever do. seen I watch it too yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Uh, they're very, very brainy kid there by the name of uh, Van who takes mm -hmm. them all to task on everything. But anyway, they have all these stories and 50% of them, I never even heard of the people, you know? It's, oh, some, yeah. it's some guy who's this week's new thing in rap, you know, who next week they won't be reporting on because he's not the big thing in rap. Mm -hmm. um, and I really get to feel old watching it because I'm looking over at girlfriend going, you know who they're talking about? They said, no, you know, but he, but he got shot by somebody else. <laughs> You know? yeah. <laughs> I guess he's important. He must be important. Yeah. He got shot by somebody. So, you know, I mean, it's just, it's, uh, uh, that, that, that's where you start feeling old. You start feeling your age a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. be that as it may. Yeah. Uh, anyway. well, one of the things, yeah, yeah, one of the things that uh, I was hoping to get, if I ever reconnected with Rod Swenson again, was really about the a little before he actually started the plasmatics. We recorded a whole bunch of, uh, and Patrick won't like this, it's punk rock stuff from the seventies. Ramones, Blondie, people like well, that. Well, he used to oh, use. He used to, I got I got but, to know who the Ramones were through Rod Swenson because he was using yeah. their music on his videos. Right, yeah. but they also he he was trying to put together basically something he could sell like a one or two hour documentary on the American punk rock scene of it was like early 77, mm -hmm. something like that. And so we, I was, he got a few guys who knew how to use, to, to do, use more professional video equipment, but he and I did the editing at a video place on four, I think it was 14th street. Well, I love about it. And, and, and Alice will remember the name of this video place. Adwar. Oh, video. Adwar video. He eventually got arrested, you know, yeah, and that's what that's where I'm leading to. We are sitting there editing away, and in the background, this had to be in like the fall, I guess, of '77. In the next studio over, we're hearing we're hearing audio from Star Wars. 
which had just come out like three weeks before. Yeah. So you know they're bootlegging. They were bootlegging. He, he got busted. Rod and I looked at each other like we we hear nothing. We know nothing. He, he got he got busted. I think for bootlegging. They, he in, sure in fact, did. he was yeah, on they, sixty minutes. They walked in and said, "Are you bootlegging films?" You know. Mm -hmm, Sam mm -hmm. Adwar was the guy's name. Making that Sam Adwar, yeah. yeah. But I, that was the, you know, but but uh, I'd love to, I, we, I don't think we ever, I don't know if he ever actually finished the documentary, but I've seen some of the, some of the excerpts, especially some of the Ramon stuff was on a PBS documentary, and I think he was listed as a contributor. But, you know, I mean, there, there, there was some really interesting you know, and not the not the best known. I think it was I think people, it was Wendy O. Williams that said to me that her greatest memory in those days of me was that they came mm -hmm. over to my place and I had a copy of uh, uh, of Star Wars, which mm -hmm. in those days, if you had a copy of Star Wars, you're under arrest. OK, because, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, but uh, also people, not that many people, only people in the business or had or with a whole ton of of money had anything like a video player well i had a three-quarter oh, three inch video player i could play it three quarter on inch. Yes, yeah exactly what, what they were on yeah that was the pro yeah. the pro the pro model here this is before vhs kids it's oh right. wait a minute wait a minute this before is before well, vhs was before super DVDs. vhs which was before <laughs> dvds oh wait a minute it was before a blu-ray uh no it was before uh netflix okay yeah. so i thought <laughs> i'd just much. let you all know that <laughs> so uh, oh, yeah. uh it, let, let's talk a little bit about the news um, oh, okay how do you feel this whole thing it with the uh, with uh, bart simpson who's running for supreme court justice uh oh. <laughs> going okay bart yeah. simpson where'd you come up with that nickname oh because it's bart what's his name uh kavanaugh kavanaugh, kavanaugh. Yeah. Brett Cavanaugh. So I call him Bart Brett. Simpson. I just think it's easier. Brett. Brett. I'm going to say Brett Maverick, but he's not that much of a no, Maverick. Bar, there, was, there was Brett Maverick and there was Bart Maverick. Bart Maverick, I just exactly. Call him cocksucker. It and Bull Maverick, yeah. Just rolls off the tongue as nicely as Kavanaugh does. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here's the question. We all know who, who Brett Maverick was, right? Mm -hmm. Who yeah. was it? John, James Garner. James Garner. James Garner. And who played Bart Maverick? Jack Kelly. Who played Bo Maverick? Ah, um... He was oh it was uh God my why my 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 Roger. mind just went went crap on it but uh, Roger, Roger Moore. Moore it was Roger Moore Roger yeah. Moore yeah I was thinking you know James Bond which James Bond? <laughs> yeah because Bo was supposedly like the why the why is it cousin. I can remember that shit but I can't remember when uh, the next appointment is I have with my physical therapist I have no Sorry. idea. Yeah, well, that's what calendars are for, and that's fucking what, PDAs, and fucking uh, 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 markers. Fuck, and fucking that. this and fucking that, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but Brett Kavanaugh, this whole, this whole thing, uh, how does it rest with you on uh, this woman that is accusing him of uh, improprieties back 36 years ago? Uh, do you feel that's fair? Don't you feel it's fair? Do you think it's going back too far? Is there is there a cutoff date for culpability? Uh, what's the answer here? First, uh, let's go to Jeff first. Yep. Well, if it, if it was me, and I was trying to get that job, and and I would say, you know, I was a teenager, and uh, and uh, I'm not very uh, happy about what I did when I was a teenager and but I don't do that anymore also and uh, I, I apologize for anything that happened at the time and uh, what I understand you know the lady is now a PhD and she's doing very well and that that's what I would say if I was him yeah but of course he said it never existed. You know, you're right. He could, he Such could, he could, he could diffuse this whole thing by saying, "Yes, I think something like that happened, and I certainly apologize if it did." You know, totally and, and 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 I've grown, grown up, and I'm older now, kid. and I understand that what I did was terribly wrong when I was a young kid. We all do stupid things when we're kids, but he's not doing that. What he's doing right. is denying it. Mm -hmm. uh, and and this is not what we want out of a future Supreme Court justice. Exactly. Okay. That's the problem. 
The problem, you know, I, I think 35 years is a long time, and all any act that he might have done as a as a minor, or was he a minor at the time? Or did, oh yeah, yeah, well, he was a minor. 17, age, I think. 17, minor at the right. time. Uh, you know, you have to go. Okay, you know, he's a kid. He's growing up. His chromosomes are bouncing every which way, and he doesn't know what to do, and he has no sense of morality. Uh, if he has a, a sadness for what he did back then because he was a kid, uh, fine. And then he admits it. Then you're going to go, okay, this, I don't, this guy sh maybe should be a justice of the Supreme Court. He's being honest. This thing with him denying, denying, denying is going to blow back in his face. There's no question about it. You know, because she's going to come forward. She obviously has the goods. Supposedly, there was a, there was a letter signed by 30 women who said that Brett Kavanaugh in high school was just a great guy at prep school I think it was what I think they're up to a couple and now it turns now. out now it turns out that all but two say they didn't sign that they were asked the question and they answered it but they thought they were kind of answering another question and they were put down on a list of people with Brett there are only two that actually said yeah we can verify that where we think he was a wonderful guy in high school now, mm -hmm. supposedly this woman can come forward with another 30 names of women who knew the reputation of these guys and what they were doing and that it was all over the school and they knew it. Now, again, I say 35 years, being a kid, there's a lot to forgive there, but not if you're lying about it. Not in this circumstance. So, Patrick, well, how do you feel about it? Do I have to answer? See, I <laughs> oh, that's the answer. Patrick is never speechless. That's the answer. Mm. Mm. I'll pass. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Tom. Okay. Oh. Oh, yeah. So, so, I think it's more than just time. I think the charge itself is pretty serious. I mean, I've done some really weird things in my life but nothing approaching that that is really that is really beyond what what anyone should really be doing and uh the fact is that she has asked for you know she has asked for an fbi investigation and so she's willing to tell the fbi that if she was lying I mean, she could go to jail for lying. So, so this sort of like boosts her credibility. But I, I think that that, that in other words, do you think you think that she's asking that she's asking that this be investigated by the FBI so that she can go on the record with the story and be considered to be telling the truth because she is she wouldn't lie to the FBI. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, do you think and, that's the reason they yeah. they're asking for that? One other thing, and this is sort of irony, is that um, last, well, whatever the hearings wrapped up last week, I was uh, listening to the uh, PBS NewsHour, and David Brooks was saying, well, the, the, the Democrats were trying to, you know, find anything they could on, on, on Kavanaugh, and it looks like he's just so sticky clean uh, that they'll never get anything out. He's like, he's obviously he, he's he's too good to be true because he's so well, sticky clean. There's no, there's, and then one week later, this all comes out. There's you know? no question. There's no question that the Democrats want mm -hmm. to put a real crimp into this guy getting getting confirmed. Uh, so th th that goes without question. However. In doing this, they were denied the right to 100,000 pages of, of uh, transcripts and so on that would uh, put on the record what his record has been, okay, and in, in what went on when he was with, uh, I think, with, uh, with, with, yeah, what? Bush, with Bush. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, so, they, so they were frustrated by that. So they went for the lowest common denominator. This woman had, uh, she hadn't come <clears throat> forward exactly. Um, she she was quite reluctant to come forward. That's why Feinstein sat on this. She made an agreement with the woman who, the mm -hmm. shrink who, yeah. who told her about this and was working as an intermediary, that she would not reveal it until uh, this woman uh, decided that she wanted to, you know, 
to reveal right. it. And that's why she sat on it for so long. And the Republicans are saying, why were they sitting on it so long? Why did they bring up to, I mean, uh, Trump said that today. Well, Trump, you know, they, she, she, she wasn't supposed to. There was a confidentiality going on there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it got, it's, it's a, what? It got leaked. It, it got leaked to a news source, and then she had to, to come out and, and say who she was. You know, it is a shame. This woman, now that she's known who she is, has had to move out of her house with her kids yeah. because her life has been threatened. Yep. You know. Uh, I mean, that's really wrong, you know. And um, what's well, funny she's somewhat is success. here she, she was already successful. Here is so why would she do this for the money, or why would she? Do yeah, this she's for not in it for the money. That's for damn sure. And they say she's not politically motivated. It is something that has lived with her for the past thirty-five years, and that she claims she has had a hard time getting past. And her shrink told her. You should get the story out because that would kind of, you know, purge a lot of those 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 problems you have regarding that incident. But this could be the Democrats' uh, collective hail mary, so to speak, because if it weren't for this, yeah, they'd be fucked. Especially since these are the same Democrats, in ma by and large, who allowed all these uh, lower judicial appointments to pass through in late August, as well as. Uh, uh, you know, turn really didn't do much or didn't put up much of a fight in allowing Gorsuch to be appointed into the Supreme Court when Republicans, led by Mitch McConnell, who was saying that our primary goal is to make sure that Obama stays a one, well, doesn't get anything appointed, it doesn't get anything done in his last year in office. Um, it said that on record. I'm paraphrasing, of course, but uh, they 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 allowed Merrick Garland not to uh, be. Uh, uh, appointed and the Democrats could have retaliated by not allowing uh, Gorsuch or Kavanaugh to be appointed. Well, yeah, you know, this is their Hail Mary. This is their, you know, they couldn't, skin of their they balls. Stop, kind of thing. They couldn't stop uh, Gorsuch or uh, this other guy. They they didn't have the votes. Well, that's right. But, you know, ways. but, but, but remember ways, this, though. remember this, Scott. Gorsuch wasn't even given the courtesy of a hearing. <clears throat> No, Garrick. Uh, Garrick. Uh, uh, Garrick. Excuse me, Garrick. Yeah, I, I know, I know, yeah. I know, I know. You know, I know. He, and... And, um, um, uh, and Scott, you can't... What? How do you excuse the uh, lower judicial appointments, the, the you know, the district judges, the federal judges? They, they, Corporate they Democrats sitting on their ass. They, they don't have the votes. They can't yeah. stop it. Yeah, it, that, that's why it's... You don't have the votes, that's you can't why, do anything well, in, the, in a Democratic uh, Congress. That's what's at stake in this, you know, in the, in the midterms. Uh, right. it's it, like, well, you got to get out and vote. Yeah, you don't have to tell me twice. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's uh, it's it's uh, it's going to be quite a you know it's it's an important time. And but if, I'm not going to gaslight those who want to vote for a third party or uh, writing candidates so long as they vote. Unlike the 100 million Americans who didn't vote at all. Well, in here's how you know. Here's how I feel about. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, no, about about third party candidates. I I love the idea of third parties being able to exist and to run for office and so on. But unfortunately, given the kind of system we have in this country, when you vote for one of those guys, you are throwing your vote away. It's better I, than it, whoring your vote away, Alex. Well, like a street corner prostitute. You know, I didn't. I was no fan of Hillary Clinton. Okay, uh, I certainly would never vote for Trump. So now, what am I going to do? Am I going to go vote? If I'm not here in New York, in New York, it's a slam dunk. Sure. But sure. if I went, if I, uh, I could vote for a third party in New York, and it wouldn't really affect the fact that Hillary would take the state. Uh, but if I lived in a state where it would make a difference, and it was on a, uh, you know, a hair-thin edge as to who was going to win or not win, and I go for a third party, I'm throwing my vote away. I, I hate to say that I would in Pennsylvania and she still lost. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, I won't do that again. Uh, uh, Tom. What were you Sorry. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. I, I actually, you know, one of the last times I, I actually uh, posted my blog, I, I blogged exactly that. This coming election, if you don't vote Democrat, you are voting Republican. I mean, don't, don't, don't be fooled by that. We really need to vote for Democratic candidates. 
And, I mean, I'm not a big fan of Joe Manchin either. But I tell you, if I was with, living in West Virginia, I would vote for Joe Manchin because right now the, the Republican uh, establishment is not, is not holding Trump accountable. accountable. And if they continue to, to control the Senate, they will continue to not hold him accountable. Right, right, right. So I mean, so, if they continue to hold the Senate, maybe it'll galvanize the left to yeah. uh, not gaslight progressive candidates as much as they have in the past anymore. Same reason why I see a comparison to the uh, you know Black Lives Matter protesters who are uh, standing in the streets blocking traffic. They're not doing that to win hearts and minds all the time. They resort to measures like that to let you, the driver, know just how inconvenient, at the very least, it is to have. Uh, to have circumstances beyond your your control getting from one point to another any more than it's, uh, you know, inconvenient, to say the very least, to have um, your compromised principles still lose out to... Yeah, yeah well, well, you, see you know, sometimes... <laughs> yes, yes, Tom. I was just saying, when it comes to, to political activity, there's no either or. I mean, you can do the actions of the street and still vote. I mean, you you can do all of these things, and you can certainly push the Democrats uh, to be more progressive. But if you if you do not vote, uh, you're going to guarantee more of the same. Uh, I, yeah, if you I, do not yeah. vote. We can agree on that. If you do not vote, yes. Well, all all I'm tell- saying is, it's no time, folks, to go throw your vote away. You know, uh, uh, or again, not vote at all because you think, well, it's not going to make. What I do is not going to make it. Well, difference. here's here's yeah. my here's my it, it, spe- the, difference, the, the difference is this is not a mm. race in which there's an electoral college. This is a race in which the person who gets the most votes wins. Okay. Yeah. So it's you know I feel that here in New York I would go well, why should I vote for president? Uh, because the, with the electoral college I know the way New York is going to go. So no matter who I vote for, it's, it's going to all boil down to a handful of votes that go to Washington in the Electoral College. Uh, I'm, I do not like the Electoral College. I think it's time to do away with it because I think what it does is it doesn't count my vote. You know, And my vote doesn't make a difference in a presidential race because if a state is a blue, is a blue state, it's going to be a blue state. And if it's a red state, it's going to be a red state. The only place where it would really make a difference is in those states that are on the edge, that could go, that could flip either way. Uh, but but yeah. when it comes to the, these races, uh, you've got to get out and vote because your vote does make a difference. And uh, it make more of a difference in the Senate and congressional races than they do in the presidential race. As we could see, I mean, three thousand more, three million more people voted for Hillary, and what do we have? This fucking orange schmuck in office for crying out loud! <laughs> ah, yes, the not Trump that I'm racist <laughs> against orange, but you know, it really isn't a color that's found in nature. Uh, not that it's orangutan. It's found in prisons, though. What? <laughs> it's found in prisons, though. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. Orange jumpsuit. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's about, he, you well, know something? Been, there have been jokes about Orange is the New Black for, uh, hey, if he, that mushroom dick that, that's interesting. If he, if he suddenly <laughs> wanted, had to wear one of those orange jumpsuits, he would just kind of disappear, wouldn't he? You know? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Yeah. Really... Yeah, that's what, uh, that's what, uh, what's her name? Uh, Stormy Storm. Daniels said. Oh, Where'd yeah, Stormy Sanders. Thought... Where the fuck did it go? <laughs> right. Well, uh, it, you know, it, I, I have, Little or no respect for Stormy Daniels because she fucked do D- Donald Trump. You know, I mean, to be honest, begrudgingly, <laughs> begrudgingly, and uh, she's making a lot of money out of it, and she's trying to stay relevant in the process. And I don't have any sympathy for malaria. I mean, she took the job. Yeah. You know, same reasons why I don't either. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. I guess I, I guess he's proof that if you've got money, you can get the good-looking get. If woman. I feel sorry for any of the Trump family, it's barren. But other than that, everyone else can go fuck themselves with a broken bottle for all I care. Tiffany's all right. Who? Who? Barron? Yeah. Tiffany. With a name like that, he'll grow up gay. The second daughter. Huh? The second, I don't know. Well, if she's yeah. staying out of the spotlight, which apparently she is because I don't know who she is. Then yeah, I'll agree with you, Scott. Yeah, maybe she is all right. Who who are you talking about? Is uh, um, um, the second wife's 
Gone. Tiffany. She's she's uh, what's her name's wife? Uh, Marla Maples. Marla Maples. Marla? Yeah. 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 Daughter. Daughter. Yeah. Daughter. Yeah. yeah. Not wife. Yeah. yeah. Not wife. <laughs> anyway. Let's hope not. Yeah. And she, Never yeah. know, though. Uh, however, the genetic uh, oh, mixture there didn't knows. work that well because Tiffany isn't isn't that good looking. She isn't as good looking as the other kids. You know, oh, the ones through I Ivanka. I think she's much better looking than Ivanka. Oh, really? You think so? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's more natural. Yeah, but she maybe, does. She yeah. hasn't entered into any of this. I think she's not happy with it. You know. Well, Marla Maples is beautiful, too. I mean, oh, Marla like, Maples was quite attractive, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. But it shows you, if you got a lot of money, you can, you can get the uh, the hot tail, you know? I mean, uh, uh, I'm using, I think and that's... grab an, them by the you-know-what. You can grab, grab a pussy. Say it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Uh, but incidentally, very interesting story today. Mark Cuban, you heard this one? Oh yes. You know the Mark Mavericks no. have been uh, 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 have been called on the carpet for having, uh, shall we say, uh, inappropriate behavior on the part of, especially the CEO oh. of, of the Mavericks. Is not Mark Cuban. He hired somebody <laughs> to be a CEO, uh, and uh, they were slapped very heavily on the wrist for this and today uh, he offered uh, 10 million dollars to be paid out to people who were affected by this and he was in tears literally on ESPN when he was telling the story he said these were people I trusted I didn't know this was going on which means you know you're not that good a businessman because you didn't watch your business that carefully because I, I got to tell you if I'm if I'm running a, a business and people are like pinching people in the ass, I'm going to be the first one to find out. Yeah. You know, but, uh, but he was, he, I saw him on TV yep. today. He was in tears, literally. Uh, maybe it's because he had to fork out $10 million. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but he did that voluntarily, that by the way. He did that voluntarily. But if he's a billionaire, what's $10 million? Yeah. yeah it's well, yeah. Although you'd rather it come out of the pocket of the Mavericks and not out of your pocket. You know what I'm saying? You have right pockets and left pockets when you're a businessman. Uh, what do they call that? It's, got, it's, it's called tax of it's called tax evasion. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but, uh, it stems from the saying I I, I I lamented that I had no uh, that I had no shoes until I met a man who had no feet kind of syndrome. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's a fucking billionaire. So what? Ten ten million out of his own pocket. I'm sorry, Jeff. Go ahead. I was going to say that the fact that he has so many different con uh, businesses uh, that he can't manage any of these. Well, he, that's his main business, though. That's the one that he, he lives in Dallas. He loves basketball. Uh, that's, his, that's his main business. It's where he poured a lot of his money into when yeah. he... You know, got that those billions that when he sold uh, well, broadcast.com. Um, he, um, uh, but he was so really just taken back by this and felt really bad about it. Uh, and uh, I'm wondering, is this going to hurt him? Do you think all of a sudden we're not going to see him on Shark Tank anymore? Hmm. Well, he wasn't the one being accused. No, he, he, was, he hasn't been accused of anything. He's the one hmm. that found out that all these people were and should have known basically yeah. so it's you know he feels responsible for keeping them you know you for know, uh, whatever uh, they did it was under his watch but i don't think that's gonna mm -hmm. make a difference in most people's basic attitude about his business sense well the whole question needs to look at his people more <laughs> a little heavier. Well, the whole question about the me too movement you know mm. uh do you think maybe it's hurt the employability of women because some companies will be rather reticent to hire women and put themselves in the position of being ostracized for some behavior of one of their employees. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not suggesting that it will happen, but there are a lot of people who said it, it is certainly having, its, uh, having an effect. Yes, Tom. Well, actually, it makes the argument for hiring more women. <laughs> I mean, when they say, "Well, what what can we do about uh, about all the about the Supreme Court Supreme Court nominee if if uh, Kavanaugh goes out? Well, why don't you nominate a woman? You know, she's not going to listen. Yeah, <laughs> there's 
less of a chance of her being accused of doing what he did. <laughs> Patrick has his hand up. Patrick? When I, um, when I worked at my former uh, place of employment, it was, there were about 35 people that worked there, and I would say 25 were women. Mm -hmm. And so I ate lunch with women every day. And um, throughout my employment there, uh, they were referred to as my harem. And uh, it was just a platonic uh, relationship. We ate lunch, we worked together. Um, I wouldn't eat a fucking uh, sandwich with any of them at this point. I, I'd eat in my office by myself. I, there's no way that I'd even risk being uh, in a room alone with any of them in my office. I would pull what Mike Pence does because my job is way more important than public perception of, oh, he's over-exaggerating. No, I'm not over-exaggerating. I'm covering my ass because you never know now who's going to all of a sudden decide it's a oh, damn good point. He said this, and it's just her and I in my office, and there's no way of me proving that I can't or I didn't. <clears throat> and well, I think the problem today is, and I think you, this is kind of the point you're making, Patrick, is that, that today that if a woman accuses a man, who are they going to believe first? You know? She could be lying through her teeth and still, and even if it's eventually proven she was lying through her teeth, he's still been given the mark of Cain, you know? So, I mean, I think that we need to have a sense of, of, of uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Fairness for all sides concerned, not just let it favor one side, because you're going to have a lot of women who just, you know, want a payday. Who now who are going to make claims because they know they can get away with them, um, and I I just don't want to see that kind of atmosphere. On the other hand, I don't want to see women who have a just claim having it minimized by people making false claims. Yes, Tom. Well, actually, and how can you say that when when you have Trump in the White House, you know, completely, <clears throat> uh, you know, <laughs> you know, he certainly has claims against him certainly haven't hurt him. Uh, it seems like people are, have traditionally wanted to or believe the man. Mm -hmm. uh, he completely always defends men uh, in all these situations. Yeah. So I don't see any evidence of this uh, at all of women being believed before the man. Well, um, um, uh, I just it, don't see it. It, it. In the case of Trump, he's managed, you're right, he has managed to skate. And if anybody... You know, if he weren't, if we had the Me Too movement right now and he weren't president, he was still Mr. Big Shot or whatever real he thought he was. Guy. Yeah, alleged real estate guy. Dick liquor. Uh, there would be so many claims against him for improprieties that he wouldn't survive it. Nobody would do business with him. But because he's president, he's like almost behind a protective wall. Like n nobody, like this guy, uh, um, the, the lawyer for Stormy Daniels is trying to go after him. Uh, but, you know, he's having a hard time of it because he's got that presidency thing, you know, where you can't sue the president and you got to, you can't, you know, you can't depose him. And there are all kinds of things going on there. So he, he this is the reason he has to win the next election and hope he dies in office because the minute he no longer is president, all this stuff is going to come landing on him. Yeah, you know? I was just going to ask you that. What happens when he leaves? Yeah, so he better win the next election and he better die in office, okay, for his own good. <laughs> because the minute no he's out of office, head. everybody's going to line up and saying, me next. And he's going to become a national punching bag. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a long line. Yeah. Yeah. Wanting the fur punches at that motherfucker, that's for fucking sure. So my question is, how do we survive the next... Two years. Wow, we still got two years and change. Yeah. Uh, and and if yeah. he wins again, which is always a possibility because I don't give this country any credit for smarts. Um, if, if he wins again, 
another how with can this country survive six years of this kind of thing am i being I u- ultra paranoid here am i wrong we'll, we no. shall wait we no. shall see okay. yes to, uh, jeff we, we survived with nixon right yeah but yeah. you know a nixon believe it or not i mean you know like i my joke has been that you know i uh uh, compared to uh, 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 compared to Trump, Bush it wasn't so bad. In fact, compared yeah. to Trump, Daddy Bush wasn't so bad. In fact, compared to Trump, Nixon wasn't so bad. Come to think of it, compared to Trump, neither was Hitler. You know, so <laughs> come to uh, think of it, neither is an anthropomorphic talking bag of dog shit. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. But I mean, I just. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it is depressing to see how much damage this guy has actually been able to do on this country. I didn't think a president could do that much damage. I, in the very beginning, I said, well, don't feel terrible about Trump because, you know, this we survived. This country survives. But, uh, you know, Michael Moore is running around with a new film saying this is the last presidency. 11-9. You know, yeah. Uh, yes, Tom. Yeah, I would say that the, one of the difference with Nixon is, uh, as we were talking about earlier, I mean, basically the Republican Party have become uh, Trump's enablers. And Nixon had a very strong Democratic Party uh, that was holding it in check. Eventually, the Republicans realized that, uh, that they had to bail on them as well. So that's a really, really big difference, unfortunately. That gets back to what was they saying. We need to deal with the fact that uh, that these Demo- that these Republicans are enabling, and we've got to vote Democrat in November. Otherwise, we are really screwed. Um, right? yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, uh, folks, uh, you know, you got to get out and vote. That's all there is to it, you know, uh, plain and simple. Um, here is yet another story that I thought I'd mention, because uh, I do do some prep now. How about that, huh? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. That's some shit. It's a toilet paper to the asshole. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> it's not like that one. <laughs> you know, it's only a few days till Bill Cosby oh, yeah. is scheduled <laughs> to be sentenced for a sex assault case in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. And Stephen, uh, Judge Stephen O'Neill has divide, denied a defense motion to step away, uh, down from the case. They report that Cosby's lawyers sought to remove O'Neill because of what they say is an old grudge between O'Neill and a pretrial witness. O'Neill has sat on the case through two trials, hard-fought pre- pretrial hearings, and 15 defense lawyers since Cosby's arrest on December 30, 2015. Cosby's two-day sentencing hearing is now set to begin next Monday. Now, he mm-hmm. can get time in prison. Uh, what do you think the guideline is on this? Ready for this? What would, give me a guess. What, on the outside, uh, uh, what, do you, what do you think is the sentence they, they could give him? Hmm. 20 years. Anybody else want to guess? A pudding pop. By that. Huh? Per charge. A pudding pop. Life. There's, a, there's pop. only one charge here, Patrick. Oh, okay. It is the, uh, it is the um, uh, uh, drugging and molesting of a woman friend in his home in 2004. Okay. Mm-hmm. He's now legally blind, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, here is the, guiding, uh, the guideline sentence. One to four years. I thought. Mm-hmm. I thought it was like 20 years too, you know, one to four mm-hmm. years. However, the judge can choose anything from probation yeah. to 30 years in prison. I'm thinking house arrest, probation, something like that. I would say that, well, the, if the judge has got a hard on against him, probation isn't even the cards, right? Uh, of course, it can be appealed, you know. And the minimum uh, security. Yeah, yeah. One to four years. Yeah. Is he uh, is he eighty years old now? Oh, he's eighty one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, eighty one. Um, 
I don't know what would be served by throwing him in jail at this point. I think, uh, you know, he's he's blind. He, he's more of a problem. It'd be more of a problem to send him to prison for the prison, mm-hmm. you know, than it would be to have him subjected to home confinement for, say, the next four years or something like yeah. that. You know? mm-hmm. Plus yeah. the fact that he's legally blind, it would make him an a- extra special kind of prisoner that they would have to attend to. I don't know how they deal with br- blind prisoners. Do you, do you uh, really think he goes out in public that often anyway? Um, well, not, not these days. days. Not <laughs> these days. Not these days. Yeah. Uh, not it's with, not going to be anything. So. Not with Lock the, his ass up. Huh? Lock him up. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, he got away with this shit for years, you know, and and uh, uh, do I believe he did it? Oh, absolutely. I have no question ideally, in my mind. Ideally, oh, I, all of those things. I think all of the people. He, I agree with Scott. Ideally. You know, but yet they haven't been proved in court. So I'm still one of these guys going to sit around and say, you know, I'd like to have a court trial. But we can't try all those other cases because the the. Uh, uh, Statue of, limitations. Uh, Statue of Limitations has run out. Yes, Patrick. What they'll do for him if he doesn't go to prison being blind is the same as they would do for me being in a wheelchair. You would not go into a cell. You'd go into the uh, infirmary, and that's where your prison would be because you've got medical needs, and I'm sure his medical needs are more than just him stuttering around with a cane. So they would need to have him in protective custody, so to speak, so that other inmates wouldn't take advantage of him because he can't see them. Same mm-hmm. with, I mean, a wheelchair does not fit in a regular cell. You cannot use a toilet in a regular cell. Um, the beds are not are not there that are appropriate. So, you know, it would. It's it basically living in a hospital. That, that's where he'd spend his days. And I'll say this. I'm surprised he hasn't killed himself yet. Yeah. That's one thing I am very surprised that not they have not found him overdosed or something. Because at his age, you know, I, I'd be scared to death for one year in prison at my age being in a wheelchair. You know, and I'm sure it'd be the well, same. Well, my, 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 my question here is, I mean, you're saying why hasn't he committed suicide? And I think the answer is I don't think he thinks that way. I think he thinks he actually is right in the right uh, and that he didn't do anything wrong. I mean, I honestly believe he lives with that notion. I, you don't you don't see him feeling recalcitrant about anything. I don't think you're going to see in this sentencing if they say, "Well, Mr. Cosby, do you have anything to say?" And then he's going to do ten minutes on Jello pudding pops. You know, I mean, uh, he, he's probably he, he's probably going to say this is all false and blah 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 blah, and I don't deserve this and so on and so forth. I don't think he's going to say, "I'm sorry." All these women I'm, wanted to be with me, or whatever he goes. I, you know. Well, here's what I don't Weinstein get. Here, uh, no, we, we have a case out in California right now of this couple. Have you heard about them? Who went around and they would uh, go and find these women and take them up to their room and then they would drug them and have sex with them and they would then video it, okay? Uh, supposedly, I that supposedly, the number of women they've they've charged them with sixty women doing this to sixty women, but they estimate that the number is anywhere up to a thousand. All right. Whoa. Now. You got to say, well, what kind of ugly human beings are this? So we know what the people who kidnap, you know, smart, the smart kid uh, look like. They look like the kind of people that would kidnap a kid and then hold her hostage and have sex with her and do things like that. This couple are gorgeous. I mean, he's a stud muffin. She's a piece of you know what. They don't need to go out and drug women to have threesomes. Why? So the same thing holds true, and I ask the same question about Bill Cosby, one of the biggest stars in the world. He could get all the tail he ever wanted. Why did he need to drug any women? Y- yes. Uh, did you hear about the, the speaking of the smart kidnappers? Did you hear that the wife? Yeah, she's out. Who, yeah, she's out. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if that's what you're getting at. I mean, preemptively. I just heard that on the radio today. Yeah. 
Yeah, because they, they say she has spent all the time she had to spend in prison. They gave her, she had certain time at a federal prison, and they added that on to the amount. So she they she spent and all the... Do you, per, do you uh, personally believe that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She, okay. No, they said that she met, met, met the guidelines for being let go. She had served her complete sentence, according to them. Yes. Uh, uh, yes, Patrick. Two um, I heard that they miscalculated her sentence. Yeah. yeah. Why she has filled it. And that's why she fulfilled it. But two, going on with uh, a lawsuit there. Cosby and the other one, uh, why would they need to drug them? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be the same reason that uh, uh, people rape? It's more of a power trip and a, um, you know, a, uh, a way of a, a thrill to be able to do that versus... Yeah, but how long do you think you're going to get away with that? Yeah, but that, <laughs> but, I mean, you, you look it's at... It's delusional. You don't yeah, care. You look at, like, Jeffrey Dahmer, who yeah. was a great resident very near where I live. Speaking of a delusional mind, yeah. I mean, if... Know, I, how long did he think he could get away with murdering men and making them zombies and, and all of that shit? They don't think that way. So uh, I think it's the thrill. I, I think it's the, um, you know, the power. And, you know, yeah, you're right. Cosby could have gotten any woman, any time, whether he was married or not. And, you know... Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I just, I just don't understand. Like, if you saw this couple, I don't know if you've seen them. I mean, they're gorgeous. He was named Bachelor. He was on one of these Bachelor shows or whatever, <laughs> and uh, reality shows. And he, he was like made Bachelor. He was, he's a doctor, as right. well. I mean, everything going for him. And the, and the girl <laughs> is, is, is gorgeous looking as well. And you would just think these two people didn't need it. But you're right. It's probably the power trip. Yeah, see, I mean, like with me, that's why I don't drug all the women that I have. It's just my good looks and personality. It <laughs> Not all. Well, in my case, in, in my case, they say, if I'm going to have sex with you, you better drug me. Uh, just the ones that give you a lift, huh, Patrick? <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Um, uh, no, but I, it, it just, it, to me, it just, it, 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 it and, and secondly, and this is just a personal observation based on my own sexuality. I couldn't, con I couldn't, I would never like to have sex with women who were drunk. Okay. Yeah. I, I like somebody well, who is cognizant of the act they are performing with me. Not to mention that breath and that whole, yeah. Ugh. Oh, well, you know, the worst thing about uh, uh, having sex with somebody who's been drinking a lot over the evening, they don't, their breath doesn't smell like uh, like booze their breath smells like booze vomit you know uh, i mean yep. it's terrible i and I, I never girls would get drunk and i go no nope, no way i'm doing it you know yep. i want you yep. i want you to not be to know what you're doing um but uh uh you know I, good way to lose weight Good way, yeah. <laughs> good way to lose weight. Yeah, there's nothing worse than having her. sex with a woman having her throw up in your mouth. You know. <laughs> yes, Tom. Uh, changing the subject a little bit. Yes. Uh, I saw some other sentencing news. Uh, Michael, and speaking of lock of up, uh, Michael Flynn is getting sentenced. Oh, really? He will be sentenced. And you know what day he's going to get sentenced on? Yum Kippur. Your. Your birthday, December 18th. December 18th. Oh, well, happy yeah, birthday to me. Yeah, that birthday present. Yeah. <laughs> Lock him up. Lock him up. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know. Uh, um, yeah. It, it, what, what, what is it now they have on the MSNBC? They have a thing called Swamp Watch. <laughs> Swamp Watch. <laughs> Swamp Watch. Yeah. Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. Oh, here comes uh, here comes a little late to come on the show, Charlene. But hi, nevertheless, are you there? No, she's she's we, kind of we just have her picture and uh, her phone is not working. So let me remove person from this group. There we go. Uh, yes, uh, John. Just uh, in other in other legal news, uh, I on Monday will be going into jury duty. Uh, for the feeds, and I kept thinking, Jesus! You know, a couple of months ago, I could have been on the 
I could have been on the Cohen case. You know? Yeah, you could have been. Southern District, Southern District of New York. Now, let me and, ask you, how old are how, how old are you now, John? Me? Yeah. Uh, how old am I? 68. You don't really don't. I don't think you. Well, no, wait, excuse me, 70. I 70. think it's a cutoff date. It's around 70 yeah. today. Yeah. The thing is, they, they don't mind. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of older people do it because it's something to do. Yeah, you but you can, you can then. What use. I want to see, though, what I want to see, because it's on the, my little. My jury, my jury notice here. Yeah. On the back of it, district court, et cetera, et cetera. But what I think this I can't. I do not understand how this is going to work. Important: Do not bring electronic equipment, including cell phones, Blackberries, PDAs, laptops, yes, and I the saw like, that when I got to the one. courthouse. What are these people going to be doing? I mean, they only have. They have to watch whatever TV is. Well, they have you know. lots of copies of Field and Stream for you to read. <laughs> I am yeah. going to Barnes and Noble over the weekend and picking up a few books. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just like maybe they've got. I, I don't have a problem with that. Back pocket or something. That's yeah, but I keep thinking of all these. I mean, I, I was at a bar recent a bar recently, and there were like eight of us. It's not a very big bar, but everybody eight of us at the bar itself. I was the only one that wasn't on a cell phone. <laughs> no, let me uh, yes, uh, Patrick. Yeah, I you want to do that, yeah. Patrick had his hand up. Yes, Patrick. Um, yeah. What the hell would I have my hand up for? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I know what it was. Um, it what and I I may have brought this up before. Now, you, you brought up the Stanton thing of Michael Flynn, and then we're talking about Kavanaugh, and then uh, you know the the idiotic shit that uh, Trump has said with the hurricane and all of that and yeah. we keep getting lost and I just I think it's hilarious because again it's the shiny ball that the media keeps chasing yeah. when the last time the media had done a story about the kids that are supposedly still separated from their parents mm -hmm. and oh they did just, one today they did one today because they found a yeah. whole bunch more like a thousand of them that are not reunited with their parents. They're coming back to it. They're yeah. coming back to it. Because it's been gone for so long, and it's like this was everybody were yapping and crying and carrying on, and then all of a sudden a shiny ball was thrown somewhere. And Absolutely. Well, it's, uh, I, I, you know, it's, By the uh, Trump administration. I, I, <laughs> I keep uh, saying that the way Trump deals with the press is like a person throwing a fake stick for a dog. You know, the yeah, dog will always chase the fake stick. That's the press's fault. Compelling. That's not Trump. Yeah. I don't blame Trump. If he wants to keep uh, diverting attention, the press should be smart enough to know that that's what's happening, and they're not. No. They're a bunch of idiots. They're a bunch of dogs chasing a, a, a ball that doesn't exist, you know. It's like a light on the wall with a cat. And every time he throws the ball, they go chasing it just like the dog does. Yeah. You know, so what the hell? It, but they are what they are, and yeah. and I think it's hilarious. I mean, I feel bad for the kids. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I think it's hilarious. Get it? Important. Yeah. There's our theme song, by the way, in case you don't realize it. Our, hey, thanks, John Rockwell, for sticking with us for the whole show. You said you might have to yeah. go early, uh, and you didn't. I'll You're get up late tomorrow. Wrap the fuck up. Yeah. I'll get up late tomorrow. Scott <laughs> Boddicker, always a pleasure. And Brian, love your mouth. Uh, uh, Tom, always a pleasure when you call. You know it is. Doesn't and, squeal. And, Scott, and don't get too excited. Same to Jeff, and of course Patrick is our is our poster child for the show. So, anyway, if you'd all give a big wave goodbye to the audience, I'm sure they would wave back. Okay, that's our citizens panel for tonight, folks. I'm Alex Bennett. Yes. Uh, next is uh, Jack Bishop. He does a little program called The Intersection, and then right after that, come. Uh, Let's see, what time is it? They come uh, uh, 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time is a show called Connections. Tomorrow night, 9.30, it's Damian Chaplin and a program called The Exchange. And then tomorrow night, I've got to stall this a little bit, otherwise I'm going to get off early tonight. I should slow everything down. Uh, tomorrow night at uh, 10 o'clock, uh, we'll be back again with another edition of the Ramble, another citizen panel, a lot of the people being the same people that were on tonight, some new ones. We always have different people every day. 
Hope you'll decide to be one of them. We'll see you again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life, 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time here on GabNet. And as always, if you see her, you know what? Tell her I love her, okay? Bye.